What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and we have a different type of video today. No more match reviews for now. Today we're going to be doing a Chelsea news video because there's nine days until the next Chelsea game if you count it from the last game which means we get a bit of a breather. We can go back to what we were doing in the summer which was talking about everything about Chelsea not on the pitch, all of it off it because that allows us to forget the pain that Chelsea causes us every single week even though this off the pitch stuff Really, it doesn't matter if you don't perform on the pitch. Let's just forget about that for a second and talk about what's been going on in the news today. Today, I'm be talking about Nico Williams, who's recently been linked to Chelsea for a summer move, and also talk about the manager hunt. Obviously, Pochettino still in charge, but the pressure is really, really on. And as I revealed, the beginning of February and now has been backed up by multiple journalists. Chelsea have been making a list of managers and looking at potential managers in the case that Pochettino is sacked. We're going to be going through the list of what I've been told, some the talk in the media and I have an exclusive name that has not been reported a single time in relation to the Chelsea job so stick around towards the end of the video we're going to talk about Nico Williams first stick around and we'll hear about that before we get into it please make sure to like the video this is a big video and I'd really appreciate it and it takes you just one second and subscribe because I want to get back on the hunt to 10 thousand subscribers so come on the journey so let's get started and talk about nico williams who has been linked to chelsea today he's a spanish winger at athletic club and obviously chelsea get linked to a lot of players so let's not just assume he's going to come into chelsea right away but it's been reported many times that chelsea been scouting nico williams for a long time including last summer when we considered cole palmer and michael elise so We've been looking at him for a while and his profile is very, very interesting. He's 21 years old, turning 22 in June, so it'd be 22 when he joins Chelsea, which is the exact profile we've been scouting. Whether you agree with us signing young players or not, it's going to continue. And we're going to talk about how that fits into the squad and you know how he's actually going to get implemented into the squad considering he's a young player and the potential detriments of that. But on the player, he's turning 22, as I said. He's a very two-footed player. I haven't watched too many full games of this guy, but he's been around for a while in terms of a wonder kid that's been talked about and I watched a lot of videos today analysing him. He's very, very two-footed. He scores goals both on his right, both on his left. He dribbles on both his right and his left. This season, he's got 17 goals and assists in all competitions in 27 games, which is a very decent return for a young winger. The majority of that is assists. It's six goals and 11 assists. So there's a bit of a discrepancy there. But the way the Athletic Club like to play is they like to get him on the ball. He does usually a step over, goes on the outside and delivers it into the box to either Naki Williams or their other striker. So him getting assists is also a product of their style of play and he can definitely finish. Another thing I like about him is he actually has quite a lot of minutes for his young age. He has around 6,600 minutes in his senior career, which I think is a very decent amount. And it's something that shouldn't be ignored because we've seen a lot of young players coming to Chelsea since Todd Bowley, Bedad Bali can come in. That is clearly the prerogative at Chelsea to bring in young players. And a big problem with that is assimilation, actually bringing them in and seeing how they bed into the squad. There's not much experience to bring them through. I think that's a huge issue and it's something we need to address with our recruitment this summer. But it doesn't mean we can't can't target players like Nico Williams. But in terms of that younger profile, he may be on the other end of someone like Cole Palmer, who we saw come in, who's young, but has relative experience. He's been playing for quite a while. So I think that's a positive on his end. And as well, the league that he comes from. Firstly, La Liga, as we know, one of the top five leagues, very, very high level league, but also the style of play within that league. We know they're a very defensive league. They come up against a lot of low blocks. Athletic club, I'm sure, don't come up against the most low blocks. They aren't the top team in the league, but they're around mid-table and everyone knows La Liga is the most defensive league in the world statistically. So in terms of coming over to Chelsea where you face a lot of low blocks in the Premier League, a lot of the wingers that we get, they used playing transitional football. You think of Madweke, Mudrik especially. They're used to running in behind, having a lot of space. You don't get that as much as Chelsea. And watching Nico Williams, he's a very, very technical dribbler. He has a very high IQ and he's going to be used to playing against low blocks. And a lot of the videos I've watched, he's gone up against the fullback. He's created that separation. He's made some space and he's delivered and you can see the defenses are very deep he knows when to get a shot away he knows when to get a pass away his dribbling and IQ is something I want to highlight I'm going to pop a graph onto the screen right now that depict Nico Williams dribbling now first he's a very very high volume dribbler which we love to see attempts over 10 per 90 and completes over 5 per 90 which is a great, great thing to see and is very important. But not only that, he's a very effective dribbler. He has a very high IQ. Now, that is a thing that can get thrown around all the time. But when we've been watching the wingers that we have at the club right now, like Mudrik, Madweke, Sterling, I don't want to be disrespectful, but we've watched a lot of low IQ wingers. Mudrik doesn't have a very good understanding of space, doesn't create separation too well, doesn't come into the inside zones very well either. Sterling, obviously, 
he's a very clever winger. He's been around for a while. He knows what he's doing. But how many times have you seen Sterling run into a defender this year and not make clever passes? And Madweke is a player who's developing as well. Obviously, Nico Williams will have to develop as well. But when you watch him, he's a very high IQ, very high understanding of space, knows where to drop in, knows where to pick up the ball. And when he completes dribbles, as you can see on the graph that I presented, he gets into very effective zones. He often gets in around the bottom left-hand corner of the box, the goalkeeper's box, or on the bottom right-hand corner. As we said, two-footed winger can play on either side. And that means he can get shots away. He often likes to do curlers. He scored a beautiful curler against Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid on either side as well. Watch both goals. The left-footed goal, I believe, was the one against Atletico, where he absolutely bends it into the top corner. Right, The right-footed shot was against Atletico, right off the post in the bottom corner, both coming in on the edges of the box at the bottom side, not towards the touchline, but further back towards the halfway line. He's very, very good at creating those zones. And if he doesn't get into that zone to shoot, he's very, very good at creating a yard. Similar to Rafael Liao. You see one of Liao's main skills is he does a right-hand step over, a right-foot step over, sorry, and then and goes down the outside and delivers a left-footed cross. He does that so, so much. For all the highlights and all the videos I've seen of Nico Williams, he always gets the defender on toast, step over, goes left, or step over, goes right, and is often very effective with his shooting. So Nico Williams is a very exciting player, and we'll see if Chelsea's interest actually advances and moves on to negotiations in the summer. But let's move on to the second portion of the video now. Let's move on to the exclusive information. Let's talk about managers. Now, we have to preface this by saying Pochettino is not gone yet. However, the pressure is mounting. As I said, exclusively revealed at the beginning of February, near the beginning of February, Chelsea have been looking at other managers for a plan if Pochettino goes. I've been told they don't want the same duration of time that it took to appoint Pochettino. They want it to be a quicker, smoother process. And that has now been confirmed by other outlets along with names. So let's go through the names I've been told. I've been told seven names that have been discussed at Chelsea. Now, once again, I'll preface, this has not been direct negotiations at all. Nothing is going on directly. This is all Chelsea talking upstairs in the boardroom about ideas about who could potentially take over as manager if Pochettino was to go. So the first two managers that have been reported in the media recently are Robert De Zerbi and Ruben Amrim. I can confirm that they are on Chelsea's list. They have been discussed upstairs as a potential manager. However, along with that, something I must say, which links to the other names, is that I've been told there is some disconnect upstairs in Chelsea. Now, we know there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen at Chelsea, and I've been told that some people in the boardroom think that experience is very important, a very important factor in this new manager, because we have a young squad, we have a strategy to, you know, recruit young, talented players. And there is some thinking upstairs that an experienced manager is very important to try and galvanise and lead this young squad. Now, that links to the next two names I'm going to bring up. That is Hansi Flick and Jose Mourinho. Those are two names that I've been told have been discussed upstairs. Now, firstly, on Hansi Flick, I've actually been told he's very high up on the list and very, very appreciated at Chelsea. So he is a name that I would be looking out for. However, I've also been told that there is interest in Barcelona, and I think that's been reported by a Spanish outlets. It's not an exclusive there, but that'll be very interesting. If Chelsea do decide that Hansi Flick is the man, and as I said, it's just, dis just discussions. I'm not saying it will be Hansi Flick. I'm not even saying Pochettino will be sacked yet. This is just plans. However, if Barcelona are also looking for a manager, as we know they will be at the end of the season with Xavi leaving, it'd be very interesting to see if Hansi Flick decides to go for Barca instead of Chelsea, and maybe it'll be out of our hands. But Hansi Flick is very high up on this, but obviously Barcelona are lurking. Now, Jose Mourinho may surprise a couple of people, and I'm not, again, saying nothing concrete yet, no discussions yet. I've been told that Jose Mourinho is a recent discussion up in the boardroom and it links to exactly what I said about experience. It's simply the fact that they think an experienced manager will be very, very important in galvanizing and leading this young squad. Jose Mourinho back at Chelsea as a fan sounds mental. I don't believe it. I don't think it will happen personally. That's just a personal opinion, but I can confirm that he has been discussed upstairs. Now, I have three more managers to go through. One of them is Xabi Alonso. Before I get on to the last two, that have been unreported along with Hansi Flick and Jose Mourinho, etc. But Xabi Alonso is liked, very, very liked in the Chelsea boardroom. But what I've been told is Chelsea view him as near on impossible. Xabi Alonso having an exceptional season at Bayer Leverkusen this season, going to almost 100% win the Bundesliga. He's being looked at by Bayern Munich, by Liverpool, and that's if he even decides to leave Bayer Leverkusen this summer, because to be honest, there's probably no reason for him to leave. But if he does decide to leave, unfortunately, with the situation Chelsea in right now, there's going to be bigger fish gunning for Xabi Alonso, and he's viewed as pretty much impossible. But the last two names I'm going to mention that are exclusive are Michel Sanchez and Sebastian 
Honus. It must be said that I have been told, similarly to experience being appreciated for a manager coming in now with this young squad, that these managers have a considerable lack of experience. And this obviously is a contributing factor. However, let's talk about these managers. Michel Sanchez, I reported at the beginning of February when I exclusively revealed that Chelsea were looking at potential managers in case Pochettino was sacked. He's a manager of Girona, who obviously are doing a, having an incredible season in La Liga. They are challenging Real Madrid and Barcelona for the league, and Chelsea are looking at him. However, the other name is Sebastian Honus, who I genuinely had never heard of until I was told about Chelsea's interest. I've been told that he's a recent name that's been brought up upstairs, and he is a manager of Stuttgart, who are having a very, very good season in the Bundesliga as well. So, those are the seven names. Hansi Flick, Robert De Zerbi, Ruben Amrim, Michel Sanchez, Jose Mourinho, Sebastian Honus, and Xabi Alonso. That is in no particular order, but those are seven names that I've been told Chelsea have been looking at upstairs in the case that Mauricio Pochettino goes. There we go. That is the end of this bumper video. Give it a like, as I said, subscribe, and I will see you next time.